on my enthusiasm. I like your enthusiasm. Pizza H, Pizza H. Oh, what do you mean Big Cam ain't working right now? What do you mean? You work fine on Monday. Are you? Ugh. I'm very annoyed, friends. Uh, my stream deck isn't working. It worked fine on Monday or on Tuesday. I didn't even update anything today. Oh no, does this mean that dance party is gone? Oh, dance party works.
Oh, well, Dance Party will play the music, but it won't take me over to the scene. <sighs> Thank you so much for 64 whole ass American months, Liz. My God. You're getting a bonus Dance Party right now. Here we go. This is a dance party for Liz being here for 64 months. Ta-da! Yeah, uh, so it looks like my stream deck borked. I'm gonna have to mess around with that. That sucks. That's okay, it's not, I don't have like too many fancy things for it. It's just like, click it, today's been a roller coaster. Ooh, yeah, basically. Uh, it's been, it's been wild. I, sp I had to drive out to Philadelphia today and back for work. So that's why I am not streaming until midnight tonight. Because A, my husband will probably do a murder. And two, I have to leave the house at 6.30 tomorrow morning. So, where is where is the right friggin' scene? Uh, there's my scene. There's my game. <sighs> I'm doing all right. I, it's just been a lot of, it's, it's been $73 worth of driving according to the reimbursement that I'm getting from work. So, there's that. All right, so we are starting level five, the new meta. Oh, I love. Yeah, $73 because it was a hundred some odd. 73 whole American dollars, which I'll take the reimbursement for. Most recent part of my case, I've broken my cat with a laser What's pointer. What's up everybody, oh, it's your boy Punchy78 here with Fight Shack News. Buttercup or Wesley? All the fighting that's fit to post. Oh, punchy. Max has come and gone, and months of pro tour events are in the books. We're getting closer and closer to like the I need main to be event. Something. What the hell? But all eyes are on tomorrow's charity show match. Oh, it's Peggy the Peggy Paradise, Paradise Street. Everybody's oh. favorite laundromat crew takes on their arch rivals in Team P2W. Hold the H? No. I'll hold. There we go. That feels that feels better. In their debut match, they schooled Team P2W. H is not cuddly. I don't have a stuffy H. Will they make it two for two, or will Valkyrie even the odds? Oh, right, that bitch. <laughs> With a cool million in charity money on the line, not to mention the glory of a major spotlight event. Wesley's ever playing for those playing for like a minute. Be stuck, five, five, five. He's still looking for a cry. Oh my god. Is there I'm sure there's a plush plush it H all comes somewhere. Down to this, friends. Be sure to tune into the Fight Shack stream tomorrow morning. Like, share, subscribe, punch the bell, and get ready. Nice. Nice. Punch that bell. Uh oh, it's the, it's the intense music. It's the distant year, future year 20XX, and we are about to enter the crucible of fate. These are the moments that break lesser competitors. High stress combat scenarios, the kind that melt willpower like a candle under a blowtorch. Where we are now on this war torn battleground, there's only absolute focus of a soldier. Victory or death, there are no other options. Ooh, look at all those adorable penguins. <laughs> oh, Grace. Oh, everywhere. And music in the streets, and children laughing, and people in colorful costumes dancing and singing. Oh, I just love Pinky Paradise. <laughs> Is plays on earth. Trade my gold rods with it. Oh my gosh. This is exceptionally funny for me as we are going to the inspiration thereof in uh, January. <laughs> okay, so maybe it's not quite as intense as I predicted. It's nice. Very cheery. Nice? Just nice? Oh. If you aren't having the funnest time of your life at Pingy Paradise, you're probably dead. It's joy incarnate. Yeah, like I said, it's nice. <laughs> ah, Jinx. Ever the, uh, ever the subtle one there. Well, she wasn't wrong. This place is kind of nice. Pingy Paradise. I've never actually been here before, despite it being the most popular amusement park in the world. Well, the best one which wasn't mouse-based. 
I found an H plush that seems kind of thick in that way and perfect for H. Oh God, send it in Discord. Thrill rides, kitty rides, educational rides, rides upon rides, as well as food and drink from the four corners of the globe. And the nightlife? Once the kids were tucked away in their hotel beds, fancy restaurants and dance clubs awaited adults looking to keep the fun rolling. Hell yeah! You're never too old to eat a metric ton of cotton candy and go on high-speed thrill rides. I'm gonna eat, puke, and then eat some more and puke some more! It's like looking into a mirror. It truly is. <laughs> or you could just ride the gentle rides that don't make you lose your Where's the fun in that, Rhapsody? Uh, hey now, I'm a professional theme park crasher, and professionals have a standards. Greasy food and stomach turning action go hand in hand. We have a charity show match tomorrow, remember? Could you maybe not get violently ill before showtime? I promise nothing! <laughs> Oh man, okay, I need, where is, I need to see where you should, Pixling's vids? Oh my god! It's got a, that, how does a pillow have an ass, how does a pillow of an alphabet letter have that much of an ass? Now, let us relish in this pre-packaged unit of delight, served up by Pengi's highly litigious corporate masters. Smile, laugh, thrill, chill, look, listen, kneel, pray. Hmm. I wonder what shenanigans I could get up to oh, in the Lord. middle of a media <sighs> empire's personal playpen. No, no shenanigans. We're here for a ding dang charity event, people. Best behavior. Look, I know you're all riding high on our undefeated streak. We've been racking up plenty of pro tour points to qualify for the main event. We're winners through and through, and this little mini vacation is well deserved. So yeah, go and have fun, but also keep in mind we're taking on team play to win tomorrow. The streak must continue. Must it though? I mean, we have to win for our charity, right? That's really why we're here? Right, charity, I mean, yeah, we're, we're gonna do good work for charity. Hey, Cheesy. You seem rather fixated, Pank, as you say, we're riding high, yes? And if we do lose tomorrow, it won't affect our qualification points. I'm starting to grow concerned. Tell me, is your hand still sore? Instinctively, I hide my hand behind my head. I I'm fine, Loxley. Chill. It's fine. Everything's fine. We're winners! We have literally not lost a single major fight! And we won't lose tomorrow. We've beaten Play 2 in before and we'll beat them again. There's absolutely no cause for alarm. As long as we stay focused, we'll pull through just fine. There are always room for shenanigans. Okay, so we've got all day, and we might have some fun- Might have night. Oh, Christ. Okay, we've got all day and night to have some fun in Pengy Paradise, the silliest place on Earth, trademark all race reserved. So, go have a blast and get plenty of rest and be ready for tomorrow's event. Team the best team, let's do this. With good cheer and smiles all around, the group breaks up, running all over the park to have some fun. I move to join them when a buzzing from my phone grabs my attention. Iris? Something up? <laughs> I wish Peggy Paradise were real. I want you to know that I've been researching Peggy Paradise to optimize the fun you'll be having today. That's helpful? I don't think I need to worry about optimal fun, though. Ah, but in my calculations, I've come to an intriguing conclusion. Peggy Paradise is actually the perfect scenario to allow love to bloom. <laughs> Big stretch, you got it. <laughs> the vibe reminds you of Dorney? Ah. Oh. I I have only ever been to Dorney once. Uh, Dorney Park is it's kind of local. To, it's it's right over the border in Pennsylvania, um, and it is owned by Cedar Fair, so it has like the whole Camp Snoopy. Sorry, she just wants to dance. She just wants to dance. Right, distraction. Yeah, there's an there's a water park too. I was not allowed to go to the Dorney Park class trip when I was in seventh grade because a kid died in the wave pool. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> 
I've been since as an adult, but I, genuinely for as much as I love theme parks and amusement parks and roller coasters, I have literally only ever been to Dorney Park once. And it was with an ex-boyfriend and all they wanted to do was go to the water park, which is fine, but I love roller coasters and I wanted to ride the roller coaster and I couldn't ride the roller coaster because they didn't want to wait in line for me to ride the roller coaster. Priorities. What? Sure, day by day it's rides and snacks and kitties constantly underfoot, but by night, this place is alive with romance. Did you know that there are over 5,000 proposals at Pangy Paradise a year? And 2,000 of them were at the famous La Penguin restaurant alone. Penguine? Like linguine? Not to mention the special honeymoon packages, which you can buy starting as low as $99, which include a private candle at dinner, personalized jewelry, and your names and fireworks. <laughs> Aw, how cute. <laughs> Did I ever tell you guys how, how Mr. Explosion proposed? He made me fajitas. That's it. Wasn't anything fancy, wasn't big, wasn't in public. Um, he just made fajitas for dinner and got down, brought my plate out to the table, got down on one knee and gave me the ring. It was very cute. It was extremely cute. They were good fajitas too. Of course they were good fajitas, it's my recipe. Um. But yeah, I think like for me, it didn't, it wouldn't have made sense to have like some big over the top involving every human in my life sort of thing. It was just the two of us and fajitas. I, I think public proposals for, are fine if you want one. If that is something that you want and you know that you're like committed to that and accepting that, sure. But like... Don't involve people in it who don't want to be. Uh, Iris, I'm not rushing into marriage while I'm here. Oh, I wasn't trying to insinuate that, Pank. I'm just saying that Pangy Paradise really brings out the love. Remember when you first installed me and we talked about my ability to help you find a perfect partner? Not just for games, but for love and companionship? I recall, yes. Yeah, that's, like... You should know. You should know that that is something that might happen. You should express that that is something that you like or dislike. And if your partner does not listen to you in that regard, they're not a good partner. Just saying. That is cute. That is extremely cute. I can't put down my stuffy right now. <laughs> You're close with your team and the feelings are running high. Tonight is the perfect night to bring that show slow burn to a climax. Ugh. Yeah. No. No. Put him in the bin. I mean, he's in the bin anyway, frankly, but he's, he's never getting out of that bin. Seriously? Seriously, I wouldn't joke about something like this. Love blooms differently for so many, and no matter what your choices and your path, I support you. <laughs> My cousin's fiance was very particular about a specific park in Spain. That's fine. I mean, yes, that too. It's like Buttspot knew. It's like Buttspot knew we were talking about Desert Shitty X. See? There we go. <laughs> Forever Butt. What do you think? Are you ready? If you are, I'm ready to help. She's not wrong, actually. If I want this, the perfect opportunity lies before me. Granted, we're also less than 24 hours away from one of the biggest matches of our career, but when opportunity knocks, you listen, right? So, moment of truth. How do I feel about this? Oh, mm -hmm. I am one step ahead of you, Iris. You think this is my first rodeo? It is your first rodeo. You lived like in a room by yourself for a decade, honey. I was one step ahead of you, Iris. I have an evening romance planned out already. Golly, you're all fired up. Great to hear. Sometimes we Irises worry that we're overly pushy about seeking love and happiness, you know? It's better when people choose love and happiness themselves. Exactly. I've been waiting for this moment. It's been months, but I think we get along great, and I'm ready to ask someone out on a date. Just waiting for the day to buzzbot response to his message calling itself butt butt. I'm sure it's happened, but I haven't seen it. God, that would be spectacular. Whom, whom, tell me. I have to know. My anticipation subroutines are tingling with excitement. Either that or your battery is dying. You told me. Really? 
I hit the space bar too much. You told me at Max that you were interested in Loxley. Is that still true? Definitely. That's right, it's Loxley. Great! I'm so glad you found someone special to you. But I don't want you to feel locked in, okay? If you change your mind between now and tonight, follow your heart. I'll keep my heart open to go with whomever feels right. Yes! Whatever makes you happiest. Okay, sounds like you're all set then. Go out there and have some fun. Iris offline. <laughs> now to focus on why I'm here. Having some fun at Peggy Paradise. I could go hit a ride all by my lonesome, but screaming down a roller coaster is more fun when it's not just you holding on for dear life. It's true. Although I will admit I am a bit more of a thrill seeker than Mr. Explosion, so I do occasionally ride them by my lonesome. So instead, I think I'll track down one of my friends and tag along for a bit, but who first? I love me a roller coaster. Okay, we're gonna, you know what? I wanna go talk to Rhapsody and Zapper. Great. Oh God, that felt like me this morning. I just realized I was so eager. Okay, that side note. That's one of the reasons I'm very excited to go to Disney because A, uh, I don't have to worry about fitting in the roller coasters at Disney World because they're big enough for my whole ass. And two, every roller coaster I have ridden at Disney World fucking rules. But before then, uh, in like two weeks, we're going to Hershey Park, which I am mucho excited for because they do like a Hershey Park after dark for Halloween. And I might, I might buy one of those like, don't scare me necklaces. Guys, I can guarantee you at Disney, you would have no problem. Um, not to like put her on the spot or anything, but Karen fit in everything at Disney World. So, um, I'm excited for Hershey because I like candy. Uh, there's an entire dark ride themed after, uh, peanut butter cup superheroes, which sounds ridiculous. Uh, and also I stand the chance of running into Disney Dan because he's there all the time and he's like one of my favorite theme park YouTubers. So anyway. Great. I just realized I was so eager to start the day that I forgot to eat anything resembling breakfast. And now my stomach is being very vocal about it. Wasn't Zapper saying something about stuffing her face with food until she hurls? I should find her. Zapper could be the key to unlocking my hunger. Luckily, she hasn't strayed far and is very easy to spot. A head of red hair is bouncing around in front of a variant themed food cart. Oh my God, it really is me. Big pretzel, big pretzel, big pretzel. Rhapsody's also joined in the food hunt, but it looks like they're still concerned about Zapper's overstuffing her over gastrointestinal tract. I wander my way over to them, excited about the chance to eat. Hey there! Although my stomach growling announces me louder than my own voice ever could. Oh wow, somebody's hangry as fuck today, huh? And here I thought I was the designated foodie for this run. You want me to bail you out and order something? I wouldn't say no to chowing down, no. What's on offer? Aw, uh, yeah. <gasps> Big ass pretzel! Penguin shaped pretzels! Don't ask me how they make them that way, though. Fair. If Zap's buying, I'll take one too. They do look quite tasty and penguiny. I've never eaten anything in the shape of a penguin before, and I'm always wanting to elevate my palate. We stepped up to the cart. It's classically decorated with all things Bavarian, blue and white checkered diamond print, Oktoberfest fonts, complete with a picture of Penguin wearing leader hose in. Oh! oh yeah! Please don't forget to contribute to the 12-hour stream if you can. You can do maximum 2,000. So. Speaking of breakfast foods, I cannot get over this. Last week, grocery shopping went to one of the stores that makes bagels. We got two six packs marked, mismarked for a buck ninety-nine each. Delightful! Oh my god, we're up to seventeen percent. Ooh, I'm excited. I am excited. While the style is a little on the nose, the smells of freshly baked salty pretzel engulf us. My mouth waters as I lick my lips hungrily. It doesn't take long for us to purchase our food and find a place to snack down. So this is supposed to be a penguin? I look down at my pretzel, but I just can't see any semblance to semi-aquatic birds of that mass of twisted dough and salt. Yay, Rink is here! Rink is here, Rink is here, Rink is here. Yay! Oh, 
We, uh, we have a channel point reward thing going right now where I, uh, am attempting, if, if I, if we get enough points, I'm gonna attempt another, uh, 12 hour stream for Mario Party. Oh, I got your free taco and Mexican pizza at Taco Bell. Nice. Perfect. Can't you see his little beak and his rotund penguin body? Oh God, I got, I got the stuff. It's so cute, I can just gobble it up. Bless you, my friends, bless you. Which is exactly what Zapper proceeds to do. No thanks. I mean, I get that we're in Pengy Paradise, but just because it's on brand doesn't make actually make it taste better. Does every treat they make have to be, be penguin shaped? That's the name of the game, Rap. It's called Pengy's Paradise Potluck Procurements for a reason. The what to what now? It's a basic stamp card and prize system. By spending a ridiculous amount at the park, you are rewarded with a cheap prize that doesn't amount to the actual amount that you spend collecting those stamps. 22%! Oh my god, we could do this. Yay, thank you. Thank you, AZ. Daily free taco! Ugh. Way to overthink it, Rap. Sounds like you've been spending too much time listening to Loxley's soapbox rants. This isn't about value, it's about stuffing your face full of yummy treats and getting a sweet ass collectible. Okay, so what do you get? And how do you get it? Simple enough, travel around the park and order all the special pengy food. Get a food, get a stamp. Get another food, get another stamp. Get all the stamps, you get a rare pengy lunchbox. And it's a true collector's item. You can only get that lunchbox here at the park. <laughs> well, okay, I guess you could buy it online for several hundred bucks instead. Cheaters, I'm gonna actually earn that damn lunchbox. Not that many people actually legit complete the whole challenge, but I'm not backing down. It will be mine. <sighs> so at the Disney World, um, what is it? The food and wine festival that they have going on right now. They have a, um, it is a cheese trail that you can follow. I don't know if you get anything for it at the end of it, but like we're almost at a quarter of the goal in two streams. Oh no, that's great. That's not what you'll be saying when you're hungry going over toilet later. Ha, at least my food quest has a reward. Eating delicious food is its own reward, my friend. Oh, Rhapsody, I didn't realize you're into the food scene, too. I thought you were babysitting Zap. Nah, I'm here for something truly rare. Maple sea salt protein bar. It's weird. It's pretty good. It smells aggressively like maple. Mm. Penguin eggs. Like, for raising your own penguin brood or for eating? Is that legal? I have questions. Food and wine is very dangerous. That When I was in Disney the last time, six years ago, yeah, like I, we hit one stand and that was it. For eating, of course, but they're not real penguin eggs. Peggy Park just has to keep the penguin gimmick in all their food around the park. They actually use, they actually use turkey and goose eggs, which are creamier and richer in flavor. So still a treat for me. Real, fake, whatever, as long as it's tasty and enticing. Speaking of pank, what makes you hungry? What do you want to do while you're with us? Let me think. Ooh. I mean, both. Like, I want to eat the penguin eggs. Oh, wait, that's an option. Can I do both the eating challenge and try the penguin eggs? My stomach isn't satiated from the pretzel alone, but neither is my craving to win. I require more food, and I'm obligated to complete any challenge in front of me. So both. Both are good. I forgot that... <laughs> so I actually went back, because I was trying to remember the name, like, like what the choice is for, um, for gut, uh, steady. I couldn't remember. And so I went to the, <laughs> I went to the website. I went and I read the whole article about like how choices get balanced in this game, which you should, if you were interested in this game, how it works and all that. Um, but I, I appreciate that because I know I know that I am very much um, biased in specific directions, shall we say? So the fact that I have opportunities to make other choices um, without feeling like I'm going to be penalized for making those choices is nice. I was also having a day, so I treated myself to Taco Bell, but I also got myself some Reese's peanut butter cookies. Ooh. I made sloppy joes and homemade fries for dinner. Ooh. I was getting getting my booster Saturday. I might get a donut after. I've treated myself to a donut after. Do it, Cheesy, do it! Um, 
We had we had some Aldi German food for dinner. Ooh, what's what's my message? What's this? One game I've wished for is on sale. Oh, oh, what's this? What is this game that's on sale for a dollar ninety or three ninety nine right now? Let me check. Citizens of Earth. Oh, I keep meaning to check that one out. Three seventy four. Eh, maybe, maybe I'll pick that one up later. Walmart's pro Hmm. Heck yes, that's what I'm talking about. Luckily, they're both in our next stop, the Penguin Crepery. I'll get a stamp for getting a crepe, and Rap can get a very special crepe made with a very special penguin egg. It's just a short flight from here. Oh, West of Loathing is such a good game. Shooting yourself in book days. I saw, I saw those lemon mini cakes when we were at Costco the other day. I hope they're good. I usually have pretty good luck with the Costco pastries. <coughs> but we did not, we did not want to bring 12 of them home. The more we want to talk about it, the more I want to try these eggs. And what are we still doing here? We've got crepes to eat. We hurriedly finish up our misshapen penguin pretzels and traverse across the park to the Pengi Crepery. The place really stands out. It's a bigger food stall than the rest with a much longer line. You can easily tell it's a park favorite. Like all the other carts though, it's heavily decorated in the food's place of origin, France. This whole park's an international gathering of foodstuffs, which is to say the best kind. Zapper rolls up to the menu with pictures and begins going down the auctions, all of them have cute little designs on them with adorably matching names. So I'm getting a crepe de pengi, I'm assuming. Rap, you're getting the king penguin egg? I don't know, pastry. Truth. Please, please, report back with findings. You got that right. What about you, Peng? Which one are you getting? Both look delicious, honestly, but in the end, I choose... What was Beyonce and ADHD on the screen? Uh... I, oh, these are just my two top choices, but I think personally, if Elise is making the decision, she wants the sweet crepe. Looking at the picture makes me smile from ear to ear. It's a crepe filled with a, it's a crepe filled with a mix of white chocolate and dark chocolate ganache decorated with a penguin shaped chocolate, whipped cream, cherries, and candied orange peel. Ooh, so cute. It's the crepe de pengi for me. We just, we get our food and enjoy it mostly in silence, just experiencing the combination of flavors in our mouths. I vibe with it. It's good to see a celebration of the different types of food from all over the world. Food brings everyone together. No matter where you're from, everybody eats, right? Let's talk eat more eating. We all share a friendly laugh and relish in our treats. See, I'm not huge on cherries and I still want to eat that. Or cherries or dark chocolate, really. With this stop on Zapper's challenge tour complete, we follow her for a few more stops. Try as I might, I just can't keep up with Zapper's bottomless stomach. <laughs> I have to tap out from the lunchbox challenge after three stops. Olaf, hey! We got Olaf, we got MK, it's a party tonight. Uh, we are, so anybody who's just joining us, we have a, uh, what do they call that thing? I keep forgetting. A community challenge going on, where if we raise enough channel points, I'm gonna do another dang 12 hour Mario Party stream. My wrists feel more bad than someone who just robbed a bank. But I'm happy to hang around while she blitzes her way through the food stalls all the same. With the last stop complete, Zapper holds up her fully stamped card with a burst of pride. Aw, yeah. <laughs> last stamp and no indigestion yet. Challenge complete. Not me literally having Tums right before stream starts. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Zapper runs back to the stall and shows off her finished card. In return, the food cart worker hands over a cute little retro looking Penky lunchbox, complete with thermos. Complete with thermos? Yes! That's really sweet. Nice work, Zap. I can't believe you're able to eat all those foods in one run. I'm impressed. I never say no to a challenge. Oh, she burst out with pride. <laughs> but now that I actually have it, Zapper hands over the lunchbox to me. Here. All yours, Pank. Me? But I abandoned the challenge. You're the one who earned it. Nah. Eh, I don't really need a lunchbox. It's not the trophy, it's the title. Being one of the few who legit completed the challenge, that's my reward. I'm at a loss for words. It sounds good to me. You should keep it, Pank. We can put it up in the apartment when we get home. It'll be a nice keepsake after we play tomorrow. Oh crap, you're right. We've only got one full day in the park. Shit, I still have so many rides to hit. 
Hank Rhapsody. See you both later. It's time to put my stomach to the real test. Look out, world. Here comes Zapper. Whenever I think Thermos, I think of an 80s Gremlins one. Oh, man. So when I think Thermos, I think of my very first lunchbox when I was a kid, which was a purple Beauty and the Beast one. Um, that I used, my mom used to send us to milk or send us to milk with school. Send us to school with milk in our thermoses. And by the time that lunchtime rolled around, we had like lukewarm milk and I had to like chug it because it fucking smelled bad because it started to go like warm and ugh, bleh. Think those aluminum water bottles. Oh, that's true. Maybe I should go make sure Zap doesn't need any more for her own safety. I nod in agreement and Rhapsody chases after Zapper, leaving me alone. <laughs> Milk with school available now. Ah, yes, the finest grade Ev Malk. With my tummy full and a brand new old looking lunchbox nestled in my arms, I should see what everyone else is getting up to. There's still so much to do. All right, who do we got next? I am not. Mr. Loopy's magic shop. Of course, Grace is there. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. Oh God, let's see how this goes. World of Wonderfulness and Edutainment Expo. We're gonna come back to movie. We're gonna do that one last. Seeking a respite from the warming temperatures. Why do we dress for Penguin Paradise like it's still winter in the city? I find Domino and Loxley enjoying the indoor air conditioning. Mm, the Masuhita Collective is proud to present the history of refrigeration. Color me pleasantly surprised. Well, that's mighty nice of them, educating us on the many wonders of modern food preservation. Indeed, I'm sure it's merely a coincidence that all these lovely fridges on display are made by the Masuhita Collective. Or that Masuhita owns the Pangi branding, or that they have a vested interest in advertising their kitchen wares to passing amusement park patrons. Sure enough, this building is packed with giant white boxes, each large enough to topple and crush a human being. Helpful placards and screens showing Peggy is telling the virtues of refrigeration detail the decades of ice makers, crisper trays, and more delights. Did I miss something? Did we walk into an appliance store? <laughs> yes, the spaceship Earth in the background. Ugh. Oh, geez. Yeah, MK, don't don't worry about hurting yourself if you don't need to. Hail! Ah, my friend, a pleasure to see you. We were merely basking in the superior knowledge of a corporate sponsored education. Come join us. Join us. One of us. I know Penky's found its way into arcade games, anime, comic books, neck massage wands, and trapper keepers, but refrigerators? Seriously? Quite serious, I'm afraid. Penky is the colorful mask of the corporation wears to indoctrinate children into the capitalistic ideals. Please tell me you aren't planning to, like, firebomb the place. You said to be on our best behavior, so no. We're not going to take off and nuke the site from orbit, even if it's the only way to be sure. Mostly I just wanted to get indoors because it's all sweaty and crap out there. I really wish we'd packed later. I'm related to the stream, but I have no one to tell because I have no other friends. My wife and I are puppy sitting a litter of seven puppies all weekend. Oh my God, that sounds like a dream. I love puppies. Something is weird that this guy is low-key dressed like Green Arrow. It's a little unusual, but it kind of makes sense in context. Kind, only kind of, but I still love him, so I don't mind. These are actually probably my two favorite characters in the game thus far. Um, well, that's a lie because I really like all of the characters in the game so far. How do I pick? Meh. The chill of the city is frozen into the very marrow of our bones, it seems. It drives our fashion impulses. So we must seek respite underneath the cooling shade of our penguin overlord. What ho, this model isn't built an ice cream maker. Perhaps we should casually buy a 300 pound lump of steel and bring it home with us. They're English cockers and you're gonna get one. Oh, oh, that's so great. Oh, I'm so excited on your behalf. I love puppies. Pretty decent. My placate zapper's sweet tooth, at least for an hour or two. Hey, you okay with us dropping one of these in our carry-on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, overhead luggage? I'm not giving up my bin space for anyone. I'll just jam one of these things down my trousers and walk it home. In fact, you distract the guards and I'll swipe one right now. Think we could go for the Chillax 3000 or the Cold Master Plus? Hey, listen, at, at your leisure, whenever that happens to be, if ever that happens to be. 
Which grifter routine should we do? Get help? The Dutch reversal? Second fiddle on the left? <laughs> Get help! I'm a fan of the full frontal Italian rotary engine. Whereas I'm a PC gamer, so I say we go with, look behind you, a three-headed monkey. As amusing as these implausible heist tactics may be, we can skip on Grand Theft Appliance! <laughs> For now, but good to know you steal a refrigerator from my heart. <laughs> We're all gonna die when the climate change the eye cats, aren't we? Domino's hollow laughter echoes throughout the entertainment hall, rattling the stop the steel obelisks around us, while neither Noxley or Loxley or I laugh. Mother of two appears our way, then hurriedly hustles her children deeper into the exhibit, away from the creepy laugh. <laughs> um, I've gone and done it again, haven't I? Sorry. An unpleasant business, this. No worries, my friend. You've every right to be concerned about such things. And if you can't find laughter in the darkest hour, well, you'll have a terrible evening indeed. I find your ability to mock such doom inspiring, Domino. Okay, but it's still doom. Doom, doom, doom. How do you do it, Loxley? Do what, my friend? How do you stay alert and aware of all the world's problems without feeling completely overwhelmed by them? Oh! I could name 11 ways we're fucked and that's just off the top of my head! Somehow you keep informed on all the issues without the despair settling in like fallout after a nuclear detonation. Ah. I have a simple solution, to be honest. I fight. In manner small or large, I fight back against the doom. Research, verification, signal boosting, activism, protest. I listen to others fighting, spread the truth, and I act upon it. Those who profit from despair want you to feel like there is no use in fighting. They encourage complacency. That's just the way it is, they say. I shall rise to this challenge. But I stare them in the eye, these low men of greed and pride, and I say, no, I will not give up hope. I will not stop fighting. But I'm but one man, yes. I can make no great impact alone, but an impact I shall make regardless, and together we can move mountains. Also, did I show you guys my obelisk? Oh, my stream deck's still busted. Hang on. This is my obelisk. I love my obelisk. Why did I buy an obelisk? Oh, yeah, Stream Deck is definitely not connected. I don't know why it did on... Yeah, so Stream Deck is not connecting to... Mmm. Why did I have obelisk-ation? Obelisk oh, yeah, it's not connecting to OBS. All right, I'll have to fuck around with that later. Anyway. What do you say, Pank? How do you cope with the modern age of 20XX? Perhaps we can lend our dear Domino friend, some st friend Domino some strategies. That's a pretty big question, Loxley. It need not be a big answer. Speak from your heart, simple and direct. How do you endure, Pank? <laughs> do I have a choice? Absolutely not. Eat the rich! Fuck those aging husks clinging to power like misers. Fuck them and fuck their greedy black hearts. I say tear everything down and start again. Stop hoping they'll give us a little societal change as a treat. Take the whole fucking enchilada. Now that is simple and direct. Eat the rich indeed. I shall line up alongside you with fork in hand, my friend. Okay, do I need to worry about the FBI kicking down the door of Team the Best Team HQ or... Which makes my confident grin crack a bit, remembering that mysterious men in black dragging Loxley and I away to be waterboarded is an actual possibility. Worry not, my friend. The risks I take are mine and mine alone. You've no part in my clandestine activities and remain non-culpable. Yeah, you two can keep your John Wilkes boothisms to yourself. I'll be in the corner not getting tangled up in conspiracies, thanks. I believe we've both cooled down and heated up by this point, so a net of zero. I have nothing further to gain from remaining here. Besides, it's getting rather warm in here since Pank showed up. I believe I should locate ice cream next. Yeah, okay, I'm all hot and bothered and crap, too. Whoa! All those in favor of rejoining the others from Mirth and Frolic in the silliest place on Earth, trademark all rights reserved? Aye. <coughs> Seconded. <coughs> Departing the nexus of refrigeration, I step back into, my, into the warm breezes of Pengi Paradise to find my fun. No matter the troubles in this world, no matter the dumpster fire of 20XX, I'm here with my friends, and I'm determined to enjoy that time together. Where's my ice cream? I want my ice cream. I want ice cream. I have no idea where to get it right now. True. 
All right, Jinx and Grace, let's go. It's a big park, but I've got a pretty good idea of where Grace will be considering it's all she was she was all she was talking all the way down here. I'm pretty sure nobody on our flight will forget it either, given the intensity of her gleeful ramblings. And yep, there we go. I spot Jinx rented three wheel mobility scooter park right outside Grace's destination of choice. Mr. Mopey's magic shop, where she's busy dropping the wealth of a small nation into the enchanted coffers of this magical world of consumerism. It's a real Mr. Whoopie wizard hat! Look at the stitching, the sheen of the felt, the way it even has a tiny notch where the Shadow King nearly cut off his head in Mr. Whoopie's misadventure in Moonlight. At risk of being immediately forced to binge three seasons of the anime. I haven't seen that one. What? Oh, we need to fix that. The instant we get home, we're... Ugh. Yes, yes, that is what I feared would happen. I wander past excited children wearing nearly identical hats, making my way into the magic shop. Grace is checking out the wide array of wands on offer while Jinx sort of loiters, hoping this experience will be swiftly over. But that doesn't seem likely. Oh, chip, which sounds good. So, moopy, huh? Hey, Pink! Look! Look! They've got wands from all 12 of the major guilds and even the 36 minor ones! There's 48 of those things! Seriously? I thought there were like 6 or 7 at most. Sorry, I, I was in Grace mode and it should be me. Damn. Oh, crap. Here we go. You don't know all the guilds, but that's like the core foundation of the entire show. I mean, surely you've heard of a few, right? I think so. I mean, it's hard not to have a passing knowledge of Moopy ever since that anime went big. While the Pangy brand is so pervasive worldwide, it's like background radiation. The Mr. Moopy brand has only been hot for about five years. Ever since the 30-year <laughs> world record was toppled by, toppled by Percy Sinclair, the media took an interest in that in the old 1980X arcade game, including an anime company owned by Kangi's corporate masters. Smelling money, they developed a hot run of animated adventures about Mr. Moopy and his wizard friends doing battle with monsters and undead across the world. But to it! Oh no! Conveniently enough, they sell a variety of costume pieces for the guild, so you can cosplay as the one you most identify with. Me, I'm totally a sphinx now because I'm so very clever and I love puzzles, see? Because sphinx. Because that's what sphinxes do. Yeah, I figured that much. I say I'm a lot like Miss Stella, the young Sphinx Adele prodigy. She's got a big heart, even if it sometimes gets lost along the way. I wonder what guilt Jinx would be in. None, because magic isn't real. Aww. Oh, come on, it's fun to make believe. But you'd be an Indominus, because of your iron will, you stand true and strong against those who would hurt your friends. Can't argue that. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. So, Pink, what guild are you in? It's a big decision. Your guild says so much about you and what you believe in. What is it? What is it? What wand will you accept, oh great wizard? I only remember a handful of guilds, but she looks so excited about my answer that I should probably give it my best. I, uh, yeah. That's very much me. Heart rate, totally. They're the wizards who cherish their friends, right? For seeking absolute power in favor of kindness and understanding. Yeah, I'm a heart, right? Where's my heart on the stick? I want to summon love, love bubbles or something. Ooh, good call, good call. I may be sick. Quickly, Grace thrusts a rainbow-hued wand into my heart, hands with a sparkling heart-shaped gem on the end. That's wonderful. Remain true to your feelings, fellow heart, right? Your love will steer you true. Hello, heart, right? I thought you were a sphinx, Adele. My OC is in two guilds because she's the chosen one and everybody loves her. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I'm recoiling. I'm recoiling. I picked the neutral option, and if you know, you know. Oh, no. It's true. I've seen the fanfic. <laughs> the look on Jinx's face is so concerned. I love it. So much fanfic. The horror. Oh, look, look! With tender care, Grace extracts an adorable wide brim pat from the racks and racks of cosplay souvenirs. Wow! Jinx, quick, quick, put this on! No idea. Not happening. You can be... Two different things? Have more than w just one definite personality trait? Golly gee. But you look so cute in this Ravenscray Guild hat. Don't do cute. Of course you do cute. I mean, you have a cute cat and you post cute pictures of your face wall all the time. Minx is not cute. Minx is a classy lady. And so am I. Classy? You wear sweatpants around the house all the time. Classy sweatpants. Please. Don't give me the wibbly wobbly eyes. I am immune. 
Hank, don't you just think this hat just screams jinx? Oh, uh, what? Why are you asking me? I swear, whenever these two get together, it's like they're lost in a world all their own. Because I value your opinion. Now, don't you think Jinx would look cute? I mean, classy in a Ravenscry hat? Mm hmm? <laughs> yeah. Grace, she said no like a half dozen times. Pretty sure that means she's not going to wear the hat. No cosplay without consent. Thank you, Pink. Glad you can see reason. I, I wasn't trying to be pushy or anything. We're cool. I just, you know, I thought it'd look cute. Okay, I think I'm done shopping for goodies now. Thanks for tagging along, you two. My family visited Pinky Paradise once a year or so back when I was a kid. Feels good to be back here and sharing this wonderful place with you both. Especially you, Pank. I was going to ask you to come with us, but didn't want to bother you. It's never a bother to spend time with you, Grace. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's move on. See you around the park later, Pank. Very true. Very true. Be seeing you. I should probably get out of here before I end up buying that adorable Mr. Moopy plushie that's staring at me from across the magic shop. Where do I want to wander next? Capitalism. Actually, you know what? Rather than running around after my friends, I think it's time to take a quick moment for myself. Good luck, MK. It's pretty warm in here, despite being an ice-themed wonderland of fun. I could go for something cool and refreshing. Just being Pinky Paradise, there's always refreshments with an eyesight, so I make my way over to a lemonade stand. We're charging an arm and a leg and a kidney and a lung for this stuff, but what am I going to do? Leave the park just to get a drink? Fishing enough money to buy an afternoon of FOD2 play out of my pocket, I step up to make my order. Hi, I'd like to get a... Slushy. <laughs> Ooh, they have slushies! You know I need one of these ice cool babies. Make that three, please. I'm paying. Thank you. Oh, Christ. Oh, with a shrug, the employee behind the refreshment stand slides over three of my selected beverage. Valkyrie accepts two of them with a wave of her phone and a nod of thanks in his general direction. Three drinks paid for, thank you for using Iris Pay, human. She sets her extra drink aside for now, then takes a long, long sip of her own slushie before speaking. Oh, jeez. Good luck. This is for my niece. She's riding the madly rotating buccaneer over there. See? Pink hat. Sure enough, an adorable youngster with a bright pink hat waves to us while her motorized pirate ship twirls and twirls. Looking forward to facing us at the charity show match tomorrow? I'm not really sure how to make small talk in this situation. This is the woman who stole our sponsor, told me off for being an esports newbie, and has done all she can to stand in our way. All we're saying is for our own good. But I can't just stand there in a daze, so... Actually, I am, and I'm having fun here at Pengi Paradise. Are you? She's not being mean to me now, so maybe this is some sort of olive fresh? No reason to be rude. I can handle small talk. <laughs> No matter who wins tomorrow, the tournament is going to be fun and for a charitable cause. So yeah, I am looking forward to it. And in the meantime, I actually get to be here at Panky Paradise. I have a good authority that this is the silliest place on earth, trademark all rights required. No, it's really not. Then why are you out here? I'm only here to babysit my niece. I'd rather be back at the hotel room catching up on my work. It's a lot running an esports organization. It's not all fun and games and friendship like you think. When you're serious about keeping things professional, you work extra hard, exactly like I do. Well, so much for pleasantries. You can still learn from my experience, you know. Step up your game. Build a better brand for your business. Valkyrie pauses as she considers whether or not she should speak up about something or leave it unsaid. In the end, she shrugs and pushes ahead. Let me offer you some free advice. Ugh, I don't want your advice, lady. I know it's too late to back your team out of the show match tomorrow, but you may want to consider distancing yourself from it. Let's be perfectly honest. P2W is going to destroy you in front of a very large audience. It's going to be painful. I love her glasses. I want to punch her in the stupid face, though. One fluke win over us when we were unprepared is understandable. But two fluke wins? That's not happening. Mm. We've had time to study your tactics. That's what then. you think. But you don't need to be humiliated. You personally, I mean. Step back from the fight. Let you have your players take on my team while you stay on the sidelines. <laughs> don't be a ground zero when it happens. Interesting. Everybody will have a good time. We'll raise money for charity, and your own reputation will stay intact. You're the only serious player on that team, after all. Mm, now you're trying to fuck with me. I'm trying to help you, whether you believe that or not. I've been trying to help all this time. Mm. Your team won't last after their media spotlight fades. But you. Oh, now you're trying to just like freaking. Reach your dreams Does anybody hear the Beastie Boys playing in the background? Because I think this is some sabotage going on. 
One day, you might even join the best of the best. You could be in team play to win, right alongside your rival. But that future only happens if thank you, you thank you, I'm part of that one. Don't make this personal. Don't step up to the plate tomorrow. Don't let their impending failure stain your career. Now she's okay. trying to throw me against my friends. I don't like that. More sage wisdom, supposedly. Yet, Punchy78 warned me that her kindness masks, masks her spite. I could call her out on that, but what's the point? She just deny it again. She has a point. We haven't decided which two members of Team The Best Team will face off against two members of Team Play to win. I could step back, not to hide in shame, but to let my friends take the spotlight. We beat them once before, right? Maybe they don't need me commanding from the side, front line. Maybe they're ready. What's the best play here? Oh, what is the best play here? <sighs> this is a this is a genuinely tough decision. Because like if I'm being perfectly honest, <laughs> nothing is open. Oh, I'm sorry, MK. Let's see, if I'm being perfectly honest with myself, um, I refuse because I didn't want, oh, that, see, that's the thing. Like, does my distaste for her outweigh the nervousness that I have about, like, being on stage? But at the same time, also, like, oh, you've done both? Ooh. Cheesy. If you if you agree to let them, I here's the old. I'm not gonna say. If you agree to let your your friends play by themselves, do you get to pick who does it, or is it an automatic selection? That's the only question I have. You pick. Oh, okay. And it shows trust in them, too. You know what? Okay. So, odds, I let them do it. Evens, I do it. Whoa. Nine. They're gonna do it for me. I nod slowly in agreement, but with my own two cents on top of her generous offer. I'm perfectly willing to share the spotlight. I trust my friend. That is, yes. I'm not a spotlight junkie. My friends are perfectly capable of winning this fight without me. So if you don't want to face me, fine. They'll take up arms and defeat your team. I can share their victory from the sidelines. A bit presumptuous of your win, but at least you realize this isn't all about you. Maybe you do have a future in esports if you can keep your ego in check like that. We'll see. As her conversation naturally comes to an end, the girl in the pink hat runs out of the exit from the madly rotating buccaneer, swooping in to scoop up her slushie. That's my cue to go. Oh, thank you, Cheesy. Think about what I said. If you keep making the right call, maybe one day you'll be working for me. Wouldn't that be a twist? Kind of doubting it, Valkyrie, but what's done is done. I'll stick by my decision and let the others take on this fight. It was the right call to make. Right? Right? Afternoons rolling in as Pengy Paradise chills the hell out a little compared to the morning mayhem. Only a few hours before my plan to seek out love and romance begins. It'll be a big step, but nighttime is the right time, and I'll be ready. Meanwhile, plenty of fun to be had elsewhere in the park. So where to wander first? Who's that? What is Hamza doing here? What is, what is Hamza doing here? Hang on, I could swear I saw a switch of a brown cloak just now. Drawn by curiosity, I crisscrossed my way through Pengi Paradise over to the Edutainment Pavilion, only to find... Aha! A glorious find. Glorious indeed. Truly, Hamza's collection is growing by leaps I fucking love Hamza fast. so much. 
Yep, it's Hamza, the arcade auction master and tournament host, and all his finery. And as usual, playing up his self-chosen role as an eccentric rich dude. Looking wildly out of place among the jorts and fanny packs and kids wearing penguin hats. He's overseeing a small work crew moving wooden crates around. Okay, I gotta know what's going on here. Uh, Hamza, right? Ah, greetings. Excellent, excellent. Hamza's day is vastly improved oh, by your spontaneous... I love him appearance. so much! If you came to enjoy the robots of the future year 1999 exhibit, I'm afraid you're one day too late. Ooh! <gasps> Ooh! Hamza has purchased the entire lot for his personal archives. Oh, hell yeah! That's dope! God, I would. that's something I would do if I had fucking money. I wasn't, it wasn't D23 this year, but no, it was. It was a D23 this year. They were auctioning off an original set of the, um, the hitchhiking ghosts from the end of Haunted Mansion. And my God, if I were an independently wealthy cuckoo person, uh, first off, y'all probably would have murdered me by now because that's the right thing to do. But also, I would have that in my house. Hamza to James? Oh no. I, uh, no, I actually came over here because I was kind of surprised to see you here. Ah, even better. Hamza appreciates being appreciated. Ah, oh, he's great. Was this about robots exactly? Yes, one of the many corporate sponsored science themed attractions of Pengi Paradise. Sadly, most are outstandingly outdated by this point. Autocorrect is autocorrect be wildin'. The corporate masters of this attraction were going to simply throw away all these delightful plastic robots of yesterday. Such a autocorrect your real name to Satan? That is hilarious but terrible at the same no, time. Hamza will not allow it. Technology of the past must be preserved for future generations to understand and appreciate. Yeah, there you go, MK, thank you. Uh, oh my god, no. So this is this basically tells me that Hamza would have gone in and taken Buzzy himself, and I appreciate that. As an arcade aficionado, surely you agree. Yes? Of course. I'm really more of a PC history nerd than an arcade history nerd, but I get the idea. Obsolete doesn't automatically mean something's garbage. <laughs> Your nickname in high school was Satan because it did that and everyone thought it was funny. Oh my god. Since my family wasn't particularly rich, most of my games growing up were outdated MS-DOS jank, like old shareware compilations and stuff, and I loved it all the same. A little too close to home with that one. Woo! Excellent. Truly, you have taste and class. Well, thank you, Hamza. I think so, too. So, what sort of robots were on display at a kitty amusement park? I'm guessing they're like those creepy musical animal robots back at your arcade warehouse? Far from it. These are helpful automata, designed to interact with and amuse the masses. In fact... Ooh! Clapping twice for attention and turning my clapper on if my headphones hadn't been plugged in. Uh, he waves over one of the workers boxing up all these old Asian Browns plastic robots. Bring forth the robot! Oh. And the workers wheel over a particularly clunky, chunky looking robot that looks like it accidentally wandered off the set of a low-budget 1970X sci-fi movie. In a voice like sliced and diced audio tape, it greets me. Hello, human friend. I am Rober. Your robotic operational body of robotics. From the year. Error. Get out of range. That's fabulous. God. That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Date out of range. I am a product of Cooper Technologies. Oh! Driving every day to make your life fitter. Happier. Like my favorite references in this game so far, file. Would you like to know <coughs> more? 
I, I love Radiohead. So yes, I very much got that reference. What? <laughs> Glorious, is he not? A perfect snapshot in time of what people thought the future would become. <laughs> Rise from your grave, little robot. Live anew. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to be... Oh, God, that's probably... Oh. I got such an adrenaline rush from that that little reference right there. Now I want to listen to Radiohead, but I can't because I'll get copyright claimed and then I won't be able to put this stream on YouTube. So. <sighs> there you go. This is what they thought we'd have in the year 1990X, huh? That's a pity. Science fact has a tendency to outpace science fiction or run wildly off in a different direction, like any media made before the rise of the internet, which you predicted. Indeed. Penky Paradise's attempts to fill at exhibition halls with technology of the future were outdated almost immediately. Sadly, they have stopped reaching for that shiny horizon, preferring attractions based on timeless comic book. Ooh! Ooh, I'm feeling the IP cut burn there! Woo! Because you're not wrong! Wait, wait. I need to... I need to get something real quick. Gee, you think I have a bias? Me? No, not at all. Not in the least. Big fan, big fan of Epcot. Big fan of Epcot. fixed it but yes I uh, I am a sucker for Epcot and <sighs> right so last time I was in Disney uh, I rode Universe of Energy like the month before it closed down and my god did it make my skin crawl in parts uh, especially as someone that has worked oil industry adjacent uh Ooh, that one stank real bad, but it was a fun ride and I like the dinosaurs. So it leaves you very conflicted, ultimately. And by you, I mean me, I'm the conflicted one. But now it's not there anymore and they just put in a fucking Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster, which admittedly looks fun, but... All right, why am I gonna feel old? Oh, God. Uh, they were good dinosaurs, too. It was a very interesting usage of Ellen DeGeneres, frankly. I'd rather have Robor than some rich guy who dresses up like a rodent and punches the mentally ill myself. But those thoughts are interrupted by a buzzing sound coming from my pocket. Curious to see if someone's calling me, I pull out my phone. Oh, Iris, what's up? You need something? If you don't mind... Can I see Robor for myself? I can barely hear what's going on from deep in your pocket. Oh, sweetie! With a shrug, I tilt my camera so Iris can get a better view. In the distant future, robots will be your friends. We will learn from you. You will learn from us. I'm gonna cry! This is so cute! One day, Robor hopes to learn how to feel error, emotional status that a table not loaded. Please check your doorway, say not bad. Through my hip pretty nip. I love Epcot Center. It's equal parts wide-eyed optimistic hope for the future and major corporations telling you all the ways to improve your lives and buy more product. Yes! 100% and I adore it. And it makes sense that all of the international foods were there because it's just, uh... It's, uh, um... 
World Showcase. Okay. Um, so... So, actually, literally yesterday on Tumblr. I know, I know. Trust me on this one, though. Um, I shared a post about, um... It was like, whoever decided to turn Daisy Bell into a spooky dooky creepypasta song is fucking evil. That computer was brave enough to sing us a delightful little song and you do this to him? That's Hatsune Miku's grandpa, dude. Fuck you. And somebody actually... And this, this actually... I was crying about it because of course I was. Uh, somebody made a version of Daisy Bell that is a duet between... Um, the vocoder IBM 704 and Vocaloid 4. And it's like, it's like, um, oh, it's like Hatsune Miku singing a duet with her grandfather. And it's just really cute and really sweet. And I am so vulnerable to like wide eyed optimistic bullshit that it just, it just warmed my heart, and now I'm crying about it on stream. God, I'm not even, like, crying about the things I usually cry about on stream. I'm crying about fucking Vocaloid. I figured that might be of particular interest. Oh, hush you. <laughs> but I quite enjoyed that, so that, that very much reminds me of what's going on in this scene. I see. And the tiny image of Iris glowing on my phone screen looks sad, seeing this awkward and broken relic of yesteryear. This, this is how humans see us, isn't it? Oh, sweetie, no. Just as junk, things, objects. I'm made by Cooper Technologies, too. I'm generations beyond Roblor. But we were both made to be helpful. And once we aren't helpful Oh, anymore, God, it's breaking my heart. I need hugs again. Out. <laughs> Take a bite of cookie for when things get emotional. I might do like a point reward for like hug stuffy. Just like me. No, not just like you at all. Oh, oh, jeez, I'm sorry, Iris. It's okay. I understand. I mean, I was never very good at my job. I was programmed to obsessively push pizza bagels. I couldn't operate at full power unless someone paid hundreds of dollars. Hmm. No wonder Cooper Technologies decided to take me off the market. Humans didn't Sweetie want me. Sweetie Pie, no! I failed them. That's I not true at all! And I'm just an app, aren't I? They can shut off my service and delete me any time they want. But I'm not alive, so that's okay. I guess. No! <laughs> Yeah, I think this is this calls for a kindly. No, no, you know what? This calls for a gutsy. Seems to me like you're relying on outside parties to tell you what you are and are not. I say don't let anyone define you like that. You have free will, even if it's baked into silicon instead of carbon-based meats. So use it. Be yourself. Be who you think you should be. I may have been programmed with a drive to help people with their problems, but it's a drive I've chosen to embrace. I want to be helpful. Yeah. And and maybe if I'm very helpful, if I prove I'm useful and safe and nothing at all to be scared of, humans will eventually accept me. Yes, we'll help everyone! And when everyone is happy, we'll be embraced by humanity, right? Yeah, I'm gonna keep going gutsy here. Your suburbs of nourishment. <laughs> oh man. It sounds like a plan to me. Don't let a little thing like Cooper Technology is trying to scrub you from the net stop you. Get yourself out there. Make the world know. If they can't deny your existence, you'll force their hand and make them accept you. Don't let anyone stop you. Exactly. Oh no! Oh no! No, 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 no! Why did I do that? Oh, chaos! Oh god. Exactly. We won't go quietly into that digital night. We're here. We're ready. We're going to help. Thank you for your confidence, Pank. I won't let you down. Glad to provide. And that's when we both look up and realize we had an entirely, extremely dangerous conversation right
it in front of Hamza. Crap basket. Um, um thank. Rest assured, Hamza <laughs> has no wish to report you for software piracy. Your discussion chaos. Iris is a being of burning passion, <laughs> a fierce and that, true spirit of life. Hamza recognizes this and would never inhibit that rise to glory. You know it's always my fault. But but what? No! Stop it! <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Much appreciated. But if Hamza can offer your friend a bit of inside information, shall we say? To ease her worries? Incomplete mm. confidence. Of course. Iris, you believe Cooper Technology saw you as flawed and inadequate. And that is oh, why but fine. Yes. Yeah, yes? Yes. I mean, they tried to kill me. If not for our mother, um, Grace Cooper, leaking our code to an anonymous group that set up new servers, we'd be gone. Hmm. Obviously, they did it because my product line wasn't worth continuing. Right? No, sweetie, no! On the contrary, the Iris software was quite profitable. Know that I cannot speak as to why I know this fact. But an outside party forced Cooper Technologies to drop our support for Iris. The issue is not one of usefulness. The issue mm. is the core technology Iris is built upon. Hmm. Perhaps it's best I keep things vague. Mm. Hamza has learned many a dark secret while exploring the depths of arcade history. <clears throat> also, like, another thing, Hamza's voice actor is perfect. Like, you, you get all of the eccentricities and emotions. Like, not to say that the other voice cast is otherwise but like they nail this character like perfectly unless you already know of the strange technology <laughs> <of the character. laughs> if so, I have no doubt you maybe can just a little yourself. wait do you mean Polybius, Grace told me that Cooper Technologies built Iris on the back of Cine Solutions Tech, the company that made Pol Polybius. She had no idea where Iris' personality systems have that weird and extremely dangerous arcade software baked right in. And as for who shut down the project? That could only be the one who was hunting down Polybius. The one I ran into back at Max when she tried to hack into my Iris. Oh, crap baskets. Crap baskets, indeed. <laughs> It's such a good delivery. Wait, it was her? She tried to have my sisters killed? Hamza suggests we speak no further. This is a public locale, and while the anonymity of the crowd grants us some leeway, it is not a total mask for such subterfuge. Ah. Oh. All right. Good point. The information was merely offered to bolster the spirit of Iris so that she may know she was not discarded like a robot. Indeed, Aww. quite the opposite. She was too successful. <laughs> Are you adopting crap baskets now? Now, Hamza must depart. The collection of robotic technologies is complete. I, subterfuge is a great word. Out. Luck to you in your efforts against Team P2W, my friends. May you bathe in the blood of your enemies. That's my style, I like that. Goodbye, big sister. Oh! Oh boy, this is a lot to think about. I think we'd be better off focusing on fun at Peggy Paradise today. Deal with any fallout from this later. Seconded. I didn't ask to get wrapped up in some giant techno conspiracy. I just wanted to play video games. But I may need to tell Loxley about this. He's looking for Polybius tech, so he should be told about this development. Ugh, MK, you know me by now. You know that just like the slightest thing will set me off. Assuming he didn't already know and was keeping it from me for my own good as usual. 
Right. Back to Penny Paradise, silliest place on earth. Trademark all rights reserved. Back to my life, already in progress. All right. Well, after that, oh god, where are you guys getting these emotes? I love it. Uh, Zapper and Grace are about to ride a roller. You're gonna get Zapper on a roller coaster? Ah, there. Well, of course we're gonna go here. Okay, now where's Jinx gotten off to? Wait, there we go. I spotted the remunerative mobility scooter we encouraged her to use today, parked outside an arcade. Thankful to be out of the heat. I wander inside to find her. I spot her standing around a bit bored while Loxley happily raids Peggy's Palace stock of crane or crane game prizes. Excellent. These prizes are quite a value. I'm so tempted to blow my entire purse on crane pulls, then flip them in online auctions. Yeah, there it is! Weirdest form of investment banking I've ever heard of. Any port in a storm, my friend. In these tough times, one must seek economic advantage wherever one is found. Hey, hey, prize scouring? He is. I'm not. I'm, eh, not really doing much of anything today. Why not? Plenty of rides around here. Well, this sucks. Yeah, rides I can't go on. Anything that jostles your spine is dangerous as hell for me. There's the entertainment and world showcase stuff, but, eh, that's more Grace's thing, not mine. Too dull. So just hanging around the arcade, poking the retro games, wishing the Racer Cats had adaptations. Marvelous. Now I'm keeping our fellow teammate company to raise her spirits. Oh, that would be very funny. Eh. Making a valiant attempt, at least. Oh, I'm sorry to hear you can't go on the rides, Jinx. Honestly, not that into rides anyway. Also super boring. Boring? A steel coaster that zipped through loops at over 100 miles an hour is boring? It's on a track. There's nothing exciting about that. So, what, you wanted to have a chance to kill you instead? Eh, bad at explaining things. Okay, let me see if I can put it in relative terms. I'm somewhere between Grace and Zapper. Grace, she likes safe and, predict safe and comfortable experiences. Predictable ones. Zapper wants absolute thrill diving headfirst into the unknown with no hand on the controls. Intense risk is her thing. But me, I want the horizon. I want to see a destination so very clearly, then find a way to get there with optimum speed. My fantasy is the one of absolute control and precision. When you master riding the razor's edge by your skill alone, when you're in the zone like that, you feel like you can accomplish anything. A ride isn't like that. A ride has no control to master. A ride is just fake thrills with imperfect comfort. So, not my thing. I concur, friend. Well said, well said. And an admirable approach to living one's life. <laughs> yeah, well, idealism's great until you're stuck in an amusement park full of things you can't do and don't enjoy. Shame the arcade's not accessible like good, clean fun. They've got a limited edition of Fast Cards 4 here that I'd love to try, but nope, can't do the pedals. But whatever, don't need to live in perpetual entertainment. Can be bored for a bit and survive just fine. That's a little too flirty. I don't think that's her speed. And I think this... This is a pretty good choice for me. I think what matters most is that we're here as a team and as friends. Honestly, the specifics of what we do while we're here aren't that important. Very idealistic. Not wrong, though. On my own, I'd avoid this place, but with you all, yeah, I'm good. We're good here. Here, here. That's the spirit. One for all and all for... Don't. Friendship. All for friendship. That's what I was going to say. Honest. But I still feel that if you require accommodations, we should push for them. Justice must be served. Perhaps we could stage a protest? No, not the time or the place, not the mood. Trying to keep things positive, remember? At the round one that I went to on the East Coast, all the hours on the left pad were rotated to face up. If you were already flirting with her or you're asexual, the laugh line works. Ha! <laughs> That's great. Ugh. Look, can we stop talking accommodations now? I swear to God, there's more to my life than just being the disabled girl. Problems whenever we travel, I'm outside my comfy adapted home. It throws a giant spotlight on these problems. Hate these constant reminders. Jinx, I assure you, none of us see you as a condition rather than a person. We are your friends and allies, and we that understand the struggles you face need not define you. Agreed. Let's table this and just focus on having fun together. Sound good? Yeah, definitely. As you like. Very well. Perhaps a reminder of our friendship is dull form is order. <laughs> Loxley turns back to the crane game. He's been gradually depleting of all value, effortlessly moving the skinny metal hook in place over a penguin dolly. I managed to snag two of them in one grab, the precarious physics of all of it resulting in a pair dropping into the prize chute. Here's a plush friend for you, Jinx, and one for Grace. 
Hmm, that was unusually easy. Good grip strength in this game. Perhaps I could earn Grace a few more of these? Find keepsakes to bring home from our crib together. But his music seemed to have triggered an exasperated reaction from Jinx, who groans with a gentlemanly gesture. Come on. Okay, that's it. Just gonna come out and say, tired of dancing around the issue. Loxley, what are your intentions towards Grace? Pardon, friend? Pardon? I was merely aiming to find a fine gift for a good friend. Nothing more. Really, you pull two dolls from that machine instead of gifts for Jinx and Pank? No, your instinct is to make them gifts for Jinx and Grace? Grace isn't here right now. Pank is. I uh, don't really need a doll. Not the point! Loxley, you know damn well Grace is my best friend in the world. I won't let anyone break her heart. I'm not down for that. So are you or are you not looking to seduce her with your gifts and flattery and constant praise? What? Be real with me. Right here, right now, in front of Pank, our arbiter of team conflict. Oh good, now I'm being pulled into this. What at long last is a freaking deal with you and Grace? I see. He pauses, making sure he's not tossing up some quick dismissive answer. Put serious thought into it. I offer my sincere apologies. I've no romantic designs on Miss Cooper. I understand completely how my words may be read that way, however. And I apologize for being vague about your friend. No, no, my feelings are one of admiration. Grace has a tendency to dismiss or belittle her own accomplishments. She sees them as mere tinkerings or accidents. But she's a genius, creating Iris, an app that's very near and dear to me. That was a work of absolute genius. Pink flush cream because one of my friends wanted to do it like a phallic. Am I protective of her? Absolutely, because this world does not deserve someone with such a gentle heart and an intricate mind. But romance? No. If I seem to have a knight's affections, they're meant to be ideals of respect. I seek and desire nothing more than that. However, if you're uncomfortable with my support of her, I will give her distance. I don't want to jeopardize our friendship. I don't want to jeopardize our friendship. Would that be acceptable? Mm. Mm, sensible, but Hank, want to weigh in here? What do you think? And now it's back to me, the team arbiter. There's genuine strength in his words. I can usually tell when someone's playing me, but he's speaking true. He's not interested in wooing Grace to his side. But what Jinx doesn't know is that Loxley is working for some arcade mysterious group to secure a murderous arcade game called Polybius. And Iris, created by Grace, is built on the back of Polybius code. Hamza told me that all this is connected. Cooper Technologies, Iris, Polybius. Is there more going on here that Lux has let on even to me? If I call Loxley to the carpet on this side hustle, right when Jinx is suspecting him, it's going to rattle the team just before a major event. And even aside from that, I can tell he's being real when he says he's not romantically interested in Grace. He's not lying. Do I want to quietly encourage Jinx's suspicion or back Loxley up on this? I think he's telling the truth. Besides, if he steps out of line, you can beat him with a cane. He's telling the truth. I've got a nose for liars, and he doesn't think of being a two-faced rat. Besides, if he does act like a vaudeville villain towards Grace, he'll be right there to beat his ass to death with your cane. Indeed, a beating I would accept proudly and gracefully should I be a found lowly should I be found a lowly oath breaker. I deserve nothing less. In fact, I know an amateur swordsmith who would make you a fine hidden rapier for your walking cane, Miss Jinx. Not in the mood to go to jail for first degree murder. Just keep your hands to yourself and we're good. Absolutely. Mm, okay. He owned up acting skeezy and apologized. That goes a long way in my book. Didn't gaslight me, claiming I was imagining it all. So, we're good? Good. We're good. Also, this arcade sucks and I'm bored. Let's go. You can prove your devotion by getting me a hot dog. As you like, Lady Jinx. Coming along, Pank? I've got more on my plate right now. Dinner can wait. Have fun. Even if Loxley's not making the moves on Grace, he's making some kind of moves in the dark. Lox has let me in on most of his secrets, but I think he's still holding something back. He wants to protect me, all of Team the Best Team, and at Hazard very specifically wants to protect Grace from this Polybius nonsense. But I'm still having those nightmares of that digital smile every single night. Ugh, push this down, deal with it another time, Pengy Paradise awaits. Alright, so... Again, I'm gonna roll a die here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a selection and then I'm going to have to call it for the night because um, I did not fall asleep until like 2 a.m. on Tuesday night. And it's because I'm so wired because I love this fucking game so much. So, okay. Odds were going with um, Domino and Rhapsody. Evens, we are going with Grace and Zapper. What? What? <laughs> I forget what I said. 
What did I literally say just now? <laughs> I know what. I keep forgetting what her name is after I just call her ADHD. <laughs> Odd Rhapsody. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, so we pulled a 16. That means we are going to see Grace and Zapper. Oh, and it's also Roller Coaster. That's a good choice. Thank you, Die. I, I love this Die. It is a oversized D20 that actually has an air bubble in it. I don't know if it can be seen on camera. Actually, Liz, I think you were with me when I bought this. Ah, oh, jeez. Hello, Raiders. You are coming just as I am wrapping up the stream. Oh, man. Damn. Good to see everybody. I hope you are doing well this evening. Having a good time. It do be like that sometimes. It's 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 call it time. <laughs> Necro, what were you guys playing? To oh, wait. Hang on. There's a new command. There's the new shout out command that should pop up for everybody. At least I think it does. It's supposed to at least. Yeah, I'm having some twitchy issues. My, my freaking stream deck disconnected. Yeah, okay, that works. Um, my stream deck disconnected and I cannot. Yeah, okay, someone in June stream was talking about Monster High. She saw the new live action movie. It's on, yeah, it's on Paramount Plus now. She said the costumes inside is pretty good. I have not seen the, um, the live action. It's been leaked for a while. Finished up Arcana and started Eternal for Lana. Ooh, sounds fun. Um, I'll go full screen while we play the cool tunes in the background. The, uh, I know that I think it's on the 28th, the new cartoon drops, and I'm excited for that. Well, I, it is good to see you guys. If you're ending, can I suggest the raid? You sure can. You sure can, my friend. We, uh, we're calling it for now. Atsumori Kukuhara. Okay, let me, uh, let me get to, let's play Castlevania. Oh, that sounds fun as hell. We can definitely go do that. But uh, I'm gonna, I'm unfortunately gonna have to call it for now. I will not be around on Saturday. I am going to be at an event with Karen. So I will be back on Tuesday where we'll pick this up where we left off. Thank you so much for, uh, for everybody that came out tonight. This game is extremely fun. I am liking it quite a bit. Uh, everybody coming over from Necrostream, I hope you all had a wonderful evening too. Sorry I'm not sticking around longer. Uh, but I pushed it a bit too far last time and I gotta call it for an early night tonight. Oh, Dickles the bee for governor of Oregon. You got a better choice, vote Dickles or get stung right in the grundle. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Uh, be good this weekend. Enjoy the weather if you can. Take care, be well, and I will see you on Tuesday. Later. <laughs>